started. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, hello, Hisoto and Soku channel. Um, this is myself and Klempfer. We are here to, yeah, we are here to review um, review a game that was played in the 12th ladder season between Zedai and Yanko. Uh, the idea here is we're going to look over the review. We've already given it a quick look over, but um, taken a few notes. But we're going to look over what was done. We're going to really go into like detail and pick apart. Um, who, who's winning and why they're winning and try and give some feedback for people moving forward and help them improve um, as you might be aware we have um, one of the best people in the business here um, we have a lot of very good things to say about um, what is on screen okay and um, both these players are from Australia or rather the Earth oceanic community and uh, both are fairly experienced um, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to see some good plays in these three plays Okay. I think we're good to go. So with that, we will get started. So since it's a replay analysis, we will be watching uh, past games in a replay format. Uh, with mm. replay input view. Alright, let's straight into it. With uh, Zedai with a uh, good graze attack there. Okay, this is the first thing we noticed right there. Ah yes, um, okay. So, what we noticed was, if you rewind a bit, we can see that Zedai does a F5A poke, and that successfully lands. However, um, you'll notice that if you look at his inputs, he didn't input a cancel on it until quite late in the attack. Um, this led to the later hits of F5A missing the opponent and whiffing. So he wasn't able to get a potential combo out of it, which he would have been able to get if he cancelled the first hit uh, with an earlier B button press, as you can see uh, if I draw on the screen. This B button press here came quite late uh, after the <laughs> several A button presses. <laughs> so um, that means that you'll see if I play the video one frame at a time. Which is a great feature of the site. Nyanko is able to block the uh, B bullets that follow. Hmm. And I think in general there are better cancel options in that situation anyway, right? That's true. Um, I personally would have followed it up with 3A. Uh, 5C is also a good option there. Uh, it's just at that distance it might not have comboed. But uh, uh, who knows, I'm not a tuner main unfortunately, so I don't have the experience behind me to judge that situation perfectly. But I think both those would have been a better idea than B there, regardless mm. of the timing it was used. Uh, that's true, but um, the main point is you need to do it um, quite early. Um, if yeah, you're throwing yes. a button out like that, um, all the risk has already been done. Um, and the 3 is a good option on hit or block, and the main thing you want is you want, if it clips, if, if it clips them, which in this situation it did, you really want to capitalize on that and get the knockdown. Yeah, that's, that's exactly uh, the focus of this situation. Alright, so let's move on. Um, that just there. So, basically, uh, you'll notice that Zedai air tech there, um, which in itself was a pretty good decision um, because he was a very uh, long distance away from Yonko. So, Yonko couldn't realistically do anything to punish that air tech. So, that was a good decision by Zedai. And on top of that, um, if you actually revise what happens just before that air tech, he did have one flight left. Because uh, he did the... if we can rewind to that. So he did a high jump into J5C, I think. Yep, high jump J5C, J6D, and then he gets hit. So he did have one flight left. Um, now the, the problem with what he did there then is that he sh after the air tech, he should have probably flown down uh, just to get back on the ground and also not avoid that J6B that Tenchi threw out. Mm. Um, there's um, there's mainly two main disadvantages I can think of um, blocking a bullet like that when you wouldn't want to. You usually want to graze them and the main the main two reasons why is because um, firstly obviously you're locked in block stun and if you're locked in block stun that means the opponent can move before you which is you know Pretty obvious, but the second one is, and it's not entirely relevant here. But um, anytime you block an opponent's bullet, they um they they build meter because it's mountain vapor. I don't think that's really 
uh, realm in here, but it's still a really good habit to have. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that you still do, like, build meter normally, it's just concealed during that. Ah, okay. I could well, be anyway, you still you still don't want to be blocking bullets. Yeah, generally, yeah. and b especially because um, that I had a lot of time. He he was like flying through the air, and you can see oh, there's a bullet coming. Um, then when he chooses to air tech, another option could have been he could have air tech forward, which is completely avoid the bullet. Yeah, that's true. Um, but that's a little bit riskier. Um, if you want to air tech back, which is a fine choice, you definitely want to graze down and avoid the blocks. Yeah, there. Um, it's important to uh, recognize that you can act immediately after the air tech. So he could have just flawlessly grazed uh, with no kind of non-graze frames out of that air tech. So that's something to keep in mind for next time, said I. Okay, um, we'll move on. So a great J at A by Nyanko there, um, right off the high jump. Yeah, really low to ground J at A, that's, really that's well placed. the kind of thing I've been... Uh, kind of bringing up with him quite recently. It's, those J and A's are something that he's only started doing like in the past two weeks. So uh, great, great, great use of it. Uh, hopefully he can uh, get more used to it over time and really, really threaten people in neutral with them. That's a good convert. Okay. So... Yeah, this is a bit of a this is a bit of a messy situation. Um, it might look simple. It might just look like oh, Nyanko just picked a unorthodox Okazemi situ situation setup. But um, in this situation, when Zara is working up in the corner right, like that, you really want to say to him, uh, if you're going to wake up in the corner, I'm going to put you in melee corner pressure. Mm. Um, you really want to like lock them down in that corner, make them eat your high lows, eat your spirit damage, etc. I think what's happened here, um, and I might be reading the situation incorrectly, I think Nyanko has like mis misreacted or you know Twitch reacted too early or whatever and tried to chase tech out when that's not what Zed I did. And in a valiant decision to try and salvage a situation, um, Nyanko said, all right, well, I can't put melee pressure out. I'm just going to put a bullet out there. I'm just going to medium with a bullet and it did hit in this situation. But still, you, you really want to be reacting and making your Okazemi really consistent and making yeah, sure you, yeah. when they wake up in the corner, you're hitting with the melee. It was a, to Nyanko's credit, it was a slightly awkward uh, knockdown. Uh, he, he mightn't have had as much time as like a optimal ground combo, but he, I, I do think he had time to like react with a either grounded 4A, 2A, or if uh, Tenshi sees uh, Chino rolling out of corner, they, they could have reacted to that. Now, obviously what's happened here is he kind of guessed that Chuno would wake up out of corner, uh, which is a decent gamble to make, but as JD was saying, you, you really want to be able to stop them high jumping out on wake up, uh, which this wouldn't have achieved. Luckily ZI pressed a 5C though, <laughs> which in that situation got him hit. Not necessarily a bad decision by ZI though. Trying to take advantage of the... Kind especially, of if you're, especially if you're reacting to them flying away, it's yeah, not the worst option true. to pick that. Yeah, so I guess the important thing is Nyanko could uh, just get a bit more practice in with the Oki, probably. Okay, let's move on. Okay, um, so what did we see there? We uh, Nyanko did... Uh, well, the main thing I saw was um, so that I was put into a situation where he's at massive threat of getting hit by an AUB setup. And then I said, no, I don't want an AUB setup. Yeah, that was a good decision by Zedai to, uh, th this, hold on, let me go frame by frame, so, oh, is it working? Sorry, it looks like it's stuck in a loading cycle, um, oh, there we go, okay, sorry, it's a bit too far, go back, okay, so, there's the chicken block, Good now, option. We can see that Nyanko walks forward a bit. Um, maybe not the best move there, and goes into a. Oh, no, that was good. Uh, looks like. A oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, just a jump up J5A to continue air pressure. Yep. So he jumps up and J5A's. That's fine. You're going backwards. Oh! <laughs> no, what? 
Okay, so there's the J5A. Yeah, that's the falling J5A. Oh, that's why J5A needs to jump. And I was like, wait. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Yonko lands. And the next input he does... Is... He doesn't even have time to do an input. Okay, so it looks like he did press A. Uh, that probably was coming out as a close 5A. We can see Tuner is a J5A here, counter hit. So obviously uh, the, the move did try to come out, but I, I guess uh, Nyanka was kind of a bit late on the cancel, I think. Yeah, he, Nyanka probably had the frame advantage, but it's really hard to react in time for that. Yeah, you can see a lot of frames going on here, even uh, yeah, yeah. in this recording where he just wasn't doing anything. I think I think it's more of a good play from Zodai than a bad play from Nyanko. It's Nyanko's true, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe the Tuner J5A would have won out anyway. It's uh, frame advantage isn't too great in that kind of situation. Uh, but yeah, that was a good decision by Zedai. Uh, maybe something to kind of study a bit more closely for Nyanko with the interactions at that kind of height. Hmm. Okay, so let's move on. Nice, he even gets convert. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, this is <laughs> Zerai making liberal use of his favorite skill. We'll see more of that in the future. Yep. Good 6C. Uh, it kind of took advantage of, I guess, uh, Nyanko flying over him. And 5C wouldn't have done much there. But the 6C uh, at least gave some kind of lasting cover in that situation. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting use. We'll uh, see a bit more of that later in the set, which is quite good, I think. Okay. Oh, uh, Zedai, what did he input there? He inputted a 6D into 5C. Okay, uh, not a bad choice, but it unfortunately ran into a Tenshi drill. Okay, oh, okay. So okay, this is big. Take note of what's happening here. Uh, yes, this is um, this is important. Um, I think uh, I think the the sequence there was um, Tenchi did a, a sequence of uh, a string or whatever into six A, and then Zed I six B into six A. Is that what? Oh, sorry, no, it was six B. So ah, Zed six. Yep. So the first ah, B, B yeah. of the match by Zed I is a forward border escape uh, against Tenchi's six B. Which is the dribble. Yeah, 6B. Yeah, okay, now, makes sense. You'll notice that this was, they were actually quite far apart when this uh, BE happened. So Tenshi is already flying forwards here, so we can say like the distance was about this, which is multiple characters apart. Now, mm. uh, if you uh, look at what the purpose of 6B is, or that it's a lot more complicated, but if you simplify it, a 6B either gets you through their bullet into their face to counterattack them, so that requires you to be very close to them. Or you can use it to go under the opponent when they uh, jump and go for a kind of a J60 uh, pressure reset. Mm. Now, which is, which to ZS credit, that is what Nanko is doing here, however. Yes, um, so you'll notice that because the distance between the two was so great when the 6B happened, Nyanko actually can, he stopped the J60 as soon as he could to fall down. And you'll notice that uh, he actually lands right where Zedai is going with the 6BE. So, unfortunately for Zedai, it looks like Nyanko's J5A hits him during the uh, investment frames of the 6BE. So, uh, I, I know that Chuno has a unique uh, slight penalty on hers, so she can't act for a bit longer than other characters. But, yeah, regardless, I think as anyone, that B would have uh, not worked out too good. He yeah. would have really wanted to be a lot closer, just so that six J60 from Nyanka would have hmm. uh, gone over his head and landed him uh, here. And if you go back a little bit to the situation where Zedai is blocking as well, you'll notice that... um. This uh, this situation, this spacing, um, there's really there's quite a bit of time you have to confirm this situation, right? You can you have the time to see the drill approaching, and you can decide uh, what escape option you want to choose. Yeah. Um, that's true. And at, at this specific spacing, um, when you're this far apart from the opponent, a really good option is to just 4B out because mm. it means I have to extend the J60 to like unreasonable lengths to really that's chase true. you. Uh, just one problem is he is against Tenshi, which is like the 
god of punishing backstep and four B. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, yeah, it is true. Uh, I personally, yeah, high, high jump, high jump yeah. drill would 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 destroy that. I personally would have gone for a one B, which would put Zedai roughly here, or a two yes. B, which would put him roughly here. Yes, uh, both would be quite hard for Nyanko to beat. Uh, to to Zedai's credit, though, if uh, Tenshi, which started here, had done her forwards high jump, uh, which would have been a more, I guess oriented at catching things like coin maybe or you know backstep perhaps a uh, bit of a complicated situation maybe but if he had done a nine high jump he would be about here and that would have been better suited for zedai to 6b under but yeah it's that's a, a it's a bit of an ambitious read maybe in that situation mm -hmm. so okay so we'll see this kind of thing happen a few more times so but we'll yeah we'll, we'll just keep going for now there's a 6 he gets hit, uh, Young gets a uh, oh, uh, looks like that was a drop? I or think it was a drop. It. Hold on, let's just see. Uh, I like this frame by frame rewind ability. It's really good, yeah. So there's the Jay 5 a oh, oh, okay, yeah, that was a drop. Yeah. Uh, normally, Tenshi would reset on the grounded moves. Okay, so a bit of a combo cleanliness from Nyanko would have been good there, but no problem, uh, he's still got Zedai locked in pressure. Mm, it's not as much of a problem as Tenshi as would be with other characters. That's true. Um, oh, gets the crush into a reset. Okay, that was. Uh, the reset hits. Intentional. Um, and it's not a bad decision. Because as you can see, uh, Zedai's orb count. Oh, let me change the color. So uh, blue. Okay. So Zedai's orb count. He has two shattered orbs. Um, so a reset from Tenshi there, especially because she has this card here, which would allow her to go into a spell crush quite easily, uh, was a good decision from Yanko. And uh, especially when Zedai's on such low health. That's yes. It would have been very easy to close the game with a crush. Uh, just highlight his health. But um, Zedai actually did a quite good move there. He wasn't confident he could uh, react to the Hylos, or rather read the Hylos from Tenshi. Uh, and he probably did note his own orb count and decided to just go for a chicken block. Uh, which, which actually did save him here as Nyanko wasn't able to confirm the hit he got off. I think it was Zera block before it. Yep, there it is. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it technically was possible for Nyanko to take the game there with 2C into a combo, but uh, considering how spontaneous that chicken block was, it's, uh, I think uh, both players kind of played well and it just played... It mitigated the situation the played out. Yeah, that's right. So, it, it, good players from both players. We'll move on. Okay. Oh, that, that... Was not not a bad high jump, I guess. He he, he probably expected Nyanko to be in five C range. Uh, just two C is a very good defensive bullet from Tenchi. Um, good J five C. Scorching Sun. If I was Zedai, maybe it'd be good to play higher in the air to just get more cards since he doesn't really need to use. Uh, that was a decent pressure from Zedai. Uh, unfortunately, Nyanko gets out with, uh, I believe it was a BE on the charge 6A. Let's double check. No, okay, just high jumps out. Um, mm. I, I think at that range that was a safe option. It's just that True knows charge 6A uh, leaves a plus zero, so at close ranges she can beat you out with her a very quick uh, 2A or 4A even. Mm -hmm. But at that range, uh, it was probably a pretty safe bet to jump out. Uh this is a common situation when you're pressuring somebody. Um, when you're pressuring somebody, you're doing your strings, and they'll escape and be on the other side. And if you've just escaped, the first thing you'll think is, uh, how can I turn this into a pressure situation for me? Um, and this is what happened exactly here. Uh, Nyanko will quickly dash up and begin pressuring Cherno, and this pressure will quickly prove to be fatal. Uh, due to this, if you're pressuring somebody in the corner and you see that they've escaped, uh, personally, my, my first priority is to abort the situation, get out, get away from the corner, so I can't be recornered myself. To avoid situations like this. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see what happens. 
Okay. Mm. And you can see that um, I think a, a large reason why um, uh, Zara was caught in the corner like that is because he was caught blocking that drill because he couldn't react in time to Nyanko escaping. Good combo by Zara. I have a knockdown. It's a good move. Uh, will Nyanko get the combo? He does. Into armor. Very scary. Yeah, armor is very difficult Ooh. to do it. Okay. <laughs> now, uh. We, we see, uh, obviously, Zedai isn't aware of what the spell card there does. Um, unfortunately, that Hangeki would have been good if Nyanko wasn't under the effect of the armor. But, as a lot of you probably know, that armor basically gives Tenchi super armor for about 15 seconds. Uh, as well as a damage reduction, but that's not really relevant here. So, basically, that Divine Raiment... Uh, no matter what happened, it would have led to Zedai being hit, probably. Mm -hmm. I like to, I, I really like um, Nyanko's input readout right here. <laughs> it's really indicative. It's really indicative of Nyanko's playstyle, I feel. Uh, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, Hangeki is not effective against um, armor, unfortunately. Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll when see. Tenchi's knocked you down like that, you kind of just have to hold. Yeah, you, you need to wait for a opportunity to either jump out or dash out uh, either with a normal high jump or ground dash or a border escape there's uh, no point trying to poke her out of her own pressure unless you like want to land a sneaky hit into blocking again of something she's very minus on hmm. uh, because she just won't get knocked back and it's not going to end well for you <laughs> okay so uh zedai hopefully uh he, he doesn't know the effect yet but hopefully he will start to piece it together as he sees various interactions from this point. Okay, so let's keep going. So Yanko with a very painful combo into reset. Good decision. Uh, keep that armor. Yeah, make sure the armor's getting yeah, value. Armor a value up. A bit of a misplay maybe though, actually. Uh, he, he did have the opportunity to change the weather with a knockdown. Uh, he did give Zedai a chance to stay in the game by calling him mm -hmm. back, actually. So, uh, uh, not to say it was a misplay, because like he obviously did want that reset for more armor time. It's just that uh, there is some kind of... Consideration there. Yeah, and Nyanko, m m maybe he did consider it, but it's uh, worth noting regardless. Yeah. Also, a uh, sneaky J5C from Zedai after that BE here. Uh, as Nyanko's under the effect of armor, it's uh, not exactly a good idea, because even if Nyanko did get hit by it, it's his J8A or whatever he did, or he would have done if he high jumped there, mm. he's just gonna hit Chuno straight through. Yeah, it, I, Zara is really, like in this situation you just want to get out as quick as possible. Yeah. Um, Zara's pretty lucky here that Nyanko doesn't just jump up and hit him. Yeah, that's right. Okay, he, he probably still doesn't quite know what the armor does there, so... Yeah, it's true. Let's move on. Good grazing, uh, unfortunate. Yep. Okay, armor's worn off. And it's heavy fog, that I still in it. Good reland pressure from Zedai. Oh, okay. Um, that that string that I just did there, uh, 5C into 236 uh, C or B? B? Um, that's Aisha Sickle Shoot, the machine gun skill. Uh, that's that's a good pressure option. I'm actually quite impressed to see Zedai using it. Hmm. Uh, it's a kind of a greedy option that anticipates them to keep blocking or maybe try high jumping chicken blocking out. It's airtight off 5C, uh, so it, it's good to see him using it. Unfortunately, Nyanko border escaped uh, before that move came out. So by taking the greedy option to focus more on spirit damage and maybe some small chip, uh, Zedai did let that be go unchecked basically. Hmm. Okay, so let's move on. Nyanko. Okay, Th this is what JD was talking about before, actually, uh, regarding you want to get out of there uh, when you escape. Ny Nyanko tried to force an advantage there uh, after his escape, and ended up getting hit by Zedai's Far 5A because he wasn't quite out of the pressure yet. Um, I mean, it, it wasn't a completely bad idea, Zedai had no orbs yet. It's just that uh, it's something to consider, especially when it's heavy fog. I wouldn't want to... Yeah, you wouldn't... Yeah. 
when, when, you, when you have this much health advantage and heavy, heavy fog, you don't really want to be forcing messy engagements. You want to keep things clean and just close the game yeah, out. Yeah, that's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, not to say it was a bad decision. I mean, he probably was looking at Zedai's spirit and thinking he didn't really have a means to reach him at that point. Hmm. But uh, the, the result is that it gave Zedai some life back, which is a bit of a shame. Okay, let's move on. Oh, again with the F5A cancel. Yeah, you want to cancel that into three yeah, or something to true. just to keep your just just to keep your knockdown and keep, keep your steam. Yeah. Okay. So we'll note that. Oh, uh, could have probably grazed that. Oh, um, don't want to get hit by stream rules. Sure that, that happens to anyone. Really cool combo. That's so sick. <laughs> um, could have gone into the sword to limit, but uh, you should take that. That was a pretty impressive combo. Nice approach. Um, okay. I think I missed something there. Uh, so we see here Zedai landing that J5A. Um, so he has a good opportunity to start a ground combo at a hit at that low in the air and downwards momentum. So we'll see what happens. He lands. And then he kind of waits a moment. And Yanko has time to guard. Uh, now, this is something that happens quite often when you mash the A button in a descending J5A uh, scenario. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the mechanism is, but I've noticed that these kinds of drop hap drops happen the most when you mash the A button. Likely because the input buffer uh, kind of maybe resets when the land happens and your 5A comes out a bit late. Uh, I suspect that if he had been a bit cleaner with the inputs there, the 5A would have connected and he would have been able to get a uh, tasty 3-cost sword confirm. And really, <laughs> really had a good chance at turning this game around. Nyanko would maybe be on like this much health by the end of it. So he would have actually yeah. had a health lead, which is great. But uh, yeah, lessons to learn for next time. So we'll see what happens. And he, he did retain pressure, which is something. Looks like that 5C might have been a bit late, but uh, regardless, Yanko gets out of the pressure, gets, starts his own pressure, and uh, Good B catch. Yeah, perfectly reasonable B from Zedai, but unfortunately, the yeah Nyanko did 3A there, which catches B. So uh, good, good, mm -hmm. good decision by Burn. Just Nyanko might have that really interesting trade at the second game. Oh, sorry, uh, the score now is 1 to Nyanko and 0 to Zedai. It's a first to 3, which is a standard yeah. for a lighter format. Okay, so start of game 2, start of the bullet trade. Again, uh, F5A hasn't been cancelled. Looks like Zedai wanted to do a 6A follow up, but uh, I think the input was a bit late. Maybe we can rewind a bit to see. Yeah, it looks like uh, the the 6A was actually really late after the entire mm -hmm. animation ends, so... Yeah, Zedai might want to practice inputting the cancel a bit earlier, just to get the cancel yeah, you need You need to be um, ready um, to convert off of that 558, no matter uh, what, uh, what one of its multiple hits. So you want to find the timing that you can input it, so that no matter um, at what frame timing in the active frames of that move, the move will hit, you can get a conversion. Yeah. Well, I don't really endorse it. You could mash the follow-up and it probably would come out in that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's something to think about. Okay, moving on. Oh. Um, hold on, I have some notes here. Oh, sorry, there's actually a... if we rewind a bit, there's something we should look at. So, this situation here... Yeah, uh, this is big. Yeah. So, th there is a possibility that uh, Nyanko got Mahirud, which is a type of Okizeme where you kind of... Uh, be ambiguous with your relative position to them when they roll out of corner. But uh, if you look at what Zedai was doing, he wasn't really being too ambiguous with the position. And Yanko also kind of didn't really... 
Yeah, it's his block input, if that was meant to be it, came really late. Mm, he wasn't blocking at the yeah, time that he got me. So, I mean, uh, not quite sure what was going on there. I would recommend holding the guard direction down a bit earlier to avoid that. I mean, he, he got crossed up for whatever reason there anyway, but it was a bit late, the input, I feel, anyway. So hopefully uh, he'll be a bit more careful there. Uh, the more relevant thing here, I think, is for Zedai. Um, Zedai meted with a 4A here. Mm, um, that's true. And this 4A... Um, so, like, you've just knocked somebody down, you've, they've woken up in you and you hit them, and they didn't block on wake-up. And you think, oh wow, they didn't block on wake-up, it's time to collect my free damage. But you can't collect your free damage because you've meted with 4A instead of 5A. This is yeah. big. This this is like bigger than it looks because like you might in, in the heat of the moment you're doing it. You do four a four a. You know like oh there's no time. I have to react. I have to like accept the fact that I've done that and just move on quickly. But this is why reviewing of replays is so powerful because you can look here and you can say if I meet it with five a, I would be collecting how much damage like one point eight k two k two k damage. Uh, he doesn't have sword yet, so it'd be about 1.9 and and a knockdown, which is really important. Actually. Yeah, and a knockdown, which is massive, because if you do 4A, 4A, suddenly the situation is super chaotic. It's yeah, like, it's, uh, you don't what's really happening, have like, advantage. It's, it's not consistent. Slight, yeah, and, uh, it's not consistent. Whereas if you get your combo into knockdown, you've got a very consistent situation, yeah, you get your 2k right. damage, and, and that's massive. Yeah, so that's something and, to think about. But it comes from such a small difference. Yeah. It comes from the difference between 4A and 5A. Yeah, that's true. It mightn't be really uh, obvious to players when they just, uh, while they're playing, or even when they look at their own replays. Uh, so hopefully uh, we can bring light to these kinds of things uh, in our analysis over time. Mm. Okay, so let's move on. Unfortunate pressure reset forced by the 4A. Another F5A. That didn't get cancelled. Uh, oh, we went over that one actually. Um, okay, so moving on. And there was a 6 p somewhere in here, right? Yeah, uh, coming up. Oh, we'll hit there. Was that because of a poke? Actually, that's interesting. I don't see any attack input. Why did you get hit by a trigger? Oh, actually, it might be the C. No, um, interesting. Looks like he missed the third to 16 input. Yeah, he tried to 16, but it wasn't quite fast enough. Oh, and there it is, okay. So, we're seeing him 6B that drill. Um, now, this time, the, the distance wasn't as extreme, but he did it against Tenshi's drill there. Um, and on top of that, if you look at what Tenshi's doing, she's kind of defaulting to this high jump 8 J3D reset. Which is, which is a very common reset here. Yeah, yes. So it, it's designed to basically kill border escapes after the... Um, uh, on the drill. And even uh, it, it's capable of acting against border escape against the melee before it. Um, now, Zedai wouldn't have been hit outright if he had done a 2B. He, he would have gone to air pressure, but he, he probably would have been able to block in time and escape from there. Now, the, the important thing to remember is that the only border escape Zedai has been doing so far is a 6 border escape. And uh, they, they generally haven't been working out for him. And in Yonko's mind as well, it looks like he's kind of starting to notice that Zedai really likes doing uh, 6 Bs as his escape method. Mm. So Not only is Yonko noticing this, but the two times it has showed up, Yonko hasn't even had to notice it. Yonko has just been like, oh, uh, you're 6 being into me, I will collect my dad. That's true, uh, it hasn't really been working out for Zedai, so a uh, good good thing to... If I was Zedai in this situation, I would be thinking, these 6Bs haven't been working, and uh, I've been doing them as my escape now uh, twice in a row. Uh, I might want to start mixing it up. So mm -hmm. we'll see how Zedai moves from here, but uh, yeah, it's generally advisable to default to 2B as an escape option. Especially in corner. Yeah, because uh, you, you, you're going to end up right in their face a lot of the time. Especially if uh, most of their pressure revolves around uh, a lot of resets. And especially with Tenshi, if it's against her drill, you're not going to do so well usually. Unless you go through a really greedy option like a high jump into another drill. But even then, I feel like uh, you might be in position for it to reset, so it's something to think about. Okay, moving on. 
to collect his damage. Uh, unfortunately, didn't have the spirit to get a proper combo. No worries. Uh, mm, okay. Not just 6B, but Zedai seems to like going forwards as an escape. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been working out too well. well. We'll see how this evolves. Especially against a character with such high damage. Yeah, you can actually like, declare his uh, sword. Good boom catch. Uh, Zedai tries to go for that combo there. Uh, unfortunately, instead of a land cancel J6A, which I think would have comboed, he gets a grounded 6A. Which, which may have functioned as a kind of an air tech bait, I guess, so it's not all bad. But uh, Zedai might want to lab out these kind of J air J5C hit kind of juggle combos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, not the end of the world. But, uh, messes up the media a bit, but it's all good. Yonka blocks. Oh, okay. Um, not sure if that was intentional. Looking at Zedai's inputs here, it looks like he wanted to go for a, a 214B, which would have been worse probably. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I gotta, I gotta roll the ice. I just gotta do it. That's true. He has to roll the ice. So he he inputted 2 and B, and then 214B. So maybe he wanted 2B, 214B. But regardless of. Uh, you, you don't want to use 2B in mid-screen too much, especially if you're not point blank. Um, it's just, uh, if there's any distance, it's just going to miss outright, like it did there, letting the opponent escape free. Hmm. Um, uh, especially when the most, like, one of the most common defenses against mid-screen pressure is just to walk backwards, right? Hmm. It has such little block stun that it's going to be really hard to uh, reset your pressure after it. Um, it, mm. it definitely has use as like a mix-up if you're anticipating B, because it is quite hard to B with its incredibly short block stun. Or any kind of timing difference you can leverage with uh, any kind of tricky pressure. But something tells me that, uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the distance it was used from just wouldn't have allowed any kind of uh, trick like that. Mm. Even if it, in corner it's not a bad option though, because it does do more spirit at point blank than 5B. So uh, yeah, Zed, I might want to save those for the corner for now. Okay, and avoid using two one four in pressure if you can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay. That was a nice punish on reaction. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, that would have comboed if Yanko did a seven high jump. Uh, he was a bit too close to kill him. Yanko does not want to block on makeup. Yanko does not want to block on makeup. That's true. There's another mid-screen uh, 2B. Yeah, interesting. Oh, great J5. Uh, hold on, actually. Let's yeah, Nyanko. Um, okay. So, oh. That was the exchange back there. Oh, okay, I missed it. Hold on. Okay, so what Nyanko did there, he, he shot a bullet from here. And like, ZI was roughly here, right? Zedai yeah. fired his 5C, which covers this area in a bullet. <laughs> and Nyanko Yank fired, uh, was it 2B? And it, I, I think it missed. 2B or a 6C, and it was Let, off target. Rewind a bit. Regardless, uh, it was a bullet that missed its mark. So Nyanko wasn't kind of inflicting any kind of bullet cover on Zedai. Well, Zedai did have uh, some bullet cover in effect against Nyanko. Uh, even if. It will, mightn't have been active. Uh, the threat was there, and I think it's reasonable for uh, Nyanko to have been worried about it. Mm. So now, what we see Nyanko cancel his uh, 2B, yeah, 2B, or 6B, actually, um, into is a uh, 9 high jump. Yes. Um, unfortunately, this. Now, he shot his bullet roughly at the same time, but the the. <laughs> The 5C was still on him pretty much. It mightn't have been, but it, it's, I think, it, it at least looked like it was. And mm. he high jumped straight into Zedai, who, uh... Who was moving forward yeah, with an active moving melee. moving forward with an active melee, uh, J5A. So, hold on, let's see. Actually, we can slow down the speed. Okay, so there it is. They both shoot. Zedai starts moving much earlier than Yonko. Then Yonko just gets slapped with the J5A. Hmm. Um, now, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, he, he may have wanted to go for an aggressive J8A, as you can see the input here. But that will only really work if you're moving before the opponent, which wasn't the case here. Um, 
so the the smarter thing to uh, to do i think would have been to do a kind of an evasive backwards high jump which would have put him here um he, he may have actually still been hit by chumno maybe but it would have been a safer play uh the alternative action he could have done which would have probably worked out for the best here would be to cancel into 2c after that 6b Mm -hmm. uh, as Tenshi, generally 2C is a great defensive blue, and I'm sure Nyonko knows all about it. He's been using it for a long time. Uh, yeah, it's just that uh, jumping straight into the opponent when they're already moving at you. Uh, and have like some variable yeah, delay. Like, it's, have... it's not the best idea, I think, especially when it's close enough that you can't use any hitbox advantage of Tenshi's J and A. Mm. Um, but yeah, so either. Another option is backstep cancel, would have gone here and be pretty safe. Or 2C, which probably would have hit Tuna, or my the kind of default evasive action of backwards high jump. Okay, so with that in mind, let's uh, erase that and move on. Oh, sorry, I'll put the speed back up. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Two and four use. Yes. But regardless, that works. Hold on. I have some notes here. Okay. Yep. That declare was really late. Hmm. Um. Zedai didn't get a great. That two and four doesn't offer a great knockdown, especially if uh, Chuno shatters it on the wall as it's hitting him. Hmm. Um. So. Unfortunately, he basically gave up all Oki he had by declaring that sword card. Yeah. Um, and Nyanko takes advantage of it by trying to poke him. Very good yeah. Decision making. Unfortunately, it misses. Yeah, it was um, very good to react to the situation and say, "Oh, that's, yeah. that's not quite right." Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, good decision to block from Zedai. By the way, he recognized he was minus there. Uh, Zedai does a five C into nine high jump. Uh, a similar situation to before with Nyanko doing the 9 high jump, but uh, this one works out in Zedai's favor. I guess it was because they both kind of acted at the same time. Uh, hmm. Pretty, yeah, a lot of variables could have gone on there. Uh, just, yeah, it, it's not too bad. Okay. It was good for Nyanko to be safe there, I think, and just get out. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Let's keep going. Nice 2C. That's the kind of thing that would have been. Uh, would have won out in that previous stream. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, to be there, uh, not 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 bad idea to be airtight, I guess, on right block. But uh, it hit very partial. So, there's another six B. Um, yeah, there's a six B. This one doesn't quite get punished though. Yeah, we're noticing a lot of uh, six Bs from Zedai. And hold on, I have one note here. Something that mightn't be really obvious to Zedai unless we explain it. Uh, because it's it's hard to kind of see it in replays unless you focus on the inputs, but, uh, or notice. unless you already know what yeah, it, what it actually has. So you'll notice here he does J5C, which is fine. Uh, let me just highlight the input. So J5C and then a uh, 6D. Now that that would be okay if his intent was to move a great distance, but then you'll notice that he follows it with J5A. Now th this does miss, and 66J5A really would have also missed. But uh, if your intent is to attack with a melee right out of a bullet in the air, uh, you, especially at close range, you generally want to always use 6-6 six, six, um, air dash, uh, just because it lets you act uh, a few frames earlier than J6D does. But that, that's, yeah. yeah. That's an advantage that might not be obvious to someone who hasn't had it explained, or rather you probably will never find out unless you have it explained. Yeah, like, um, it's... Like this will help you with any, almost any character, yeah. right? Like, yeah, if if you fire a bullet and you want to move through your bullet cover and then put a melee at, use six yeah. six. If yeah. you're gonna be, if you're gonna be engaging directly as soon yeah. as soon, like, like yeah. at this range where they are, six six would have been uh, allowed him to act quicker. And well, uh, Nyanko jumped back, I think, uh, and kind of outranged it regardless. So it's kind of good practice if you want to attack straight out of a bullet, just to do six six. Yeah. So that's that's quite a bit of important advice there for Zedai. Okay, moving on. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> interesting inputs. Um, Just gotta I, press that A button. Yeah, it might might be good to be a bit more careful. But, 
I, I guess that didn't really negatively impact there. Something different. Another 6B, we can touch on that. Okay, here it is. That that A button kind of rapid press there. Uh, <laughs> I feel like he wasn't doing this F5A on purpose. It's kind of uh, <laughs> expecting like a close 5A to hit and going to die. Yeah. That, that's another weakness of mashing the input. You kind of uh, don't get as much awareness on what's going on uh, mm. with your attacks. So it's something to keep in mind. If you do want to... um. If you do want to press multiple buttons just to like assess the situation, um, th th I think the sweet spot's two. You double tap A at a timing where if it's close, you'll get two close A's. And if it's far, you'll get one far A, and then you react to the situation. That's, that's interesting advice. That, that does sound uh, quite, quite practical, you know. Okay, uh, let's just move on. See not this... five, not five. <laughs> not five, no. Or rather, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on. Uh, yep. Usual... Oh, Jedi takes the round. Uh, nice job. Okay, so mountain vapor. Uh, now it's doing a uh, good five C. Oh, good pressure. Um, five C is a great move to kind of do a JCC reset off in mid screen. That was some really clean movement from Zed Eyes. Really good too. Zed Eyes inputs are great too. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, this okay, is. Okay. Um, so 1, 2, 1, 4 isn't a move that you'd want to use there in the first place. Um, what was 2, it? 1, 4 is not a very good move for pressure. Yeah, the default one's just not that good. So, okay, he, <laughs> it was after two dial A's, so he could have gone into 6A or 3A if he wanted to uh, escape catch there. Hmm. Um, and there's such a big gap, like, what escape would you even catch? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's uh, very questionable. And, uh, <laughs> it's also pretty dangerous on blocks, so it's not a not a great move to do. Unfortunately for Nyanko, he must have expected something else, and he did a Bora escape. Mm. Uh, uh, no, you say that, but we will see later Nyanko doing the god border escape. That's true. So we will see that. So he's just Zeta he's just practicing the time. Zedai must have kind of uh, been kind of a happy surprise when that happened and reacted with the spell card. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, Nyanko's already been knocked down and <laughs> it doesn't combo. Unfortunately, Zedai needs a very painful three tension combo, almost for, for three point three. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Yeah. Like that's a big swing, right? So uh, Nyanko didn't really do much with that Oki. He had Quake, which he could have declared, or he could have used his uh, armor card back here. Um, now, armor card is really relevant here. Yeah, so you'll notice that the weather is Scorching Sun. Um, this means, so, uh, in case you don't know, Scorching Sun, the most obvious effect is that the higher you go in the air, like maybe about this height, I don't know exactly, but if you pass that line, uh, you start taking passive damage, uh, which kind of burns away at your health. The more higher you go, the quicker the burn is. Um, now, with a card like armor, the opponent's only real answer to it is to fly away and you know keep their distance with Tenshi. And now, th this is the o you can only like it's possible to play around on the ground, but I think a lot of players will just try to run away into the sky, and uh, that that's gonna get them to take like a huge amount of damage uh, uh, like uh, is sucky if you use private score and scorching sun you can expect like even close to 3000 damage if they just fight right? <laughs> yeah. so, so can, it's actually really significant if it's uh, we won't really comment on it but you might notice uh, their health kind of rapidly declining as they play around the scor scorching sun so mm. uh, a bit more so, awareness of its synergy with the weather would have helped you know, yeah w when you use um when you use that forecast, you have 15 whole seconds where you can yeah. just run them around the screen. And even if you don't touch them once, they have to, they, like, they're taking damage and Scorching Sun damage isn't negligible. It ticks, mm. it ticks down pretty fast if you really pay attention to it. Yeah, if and, you yeah. go high up, it really burns. So you'll probably notice yeah. it as the game plays. So, yeah, that's yeah. something to consider with that armor card from Yonko. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay. Some neutral exchanges. Oh, nice fight to from Zedai, uh, loses that off but uh, it's a pretty hard situation, so fair enough. Good dash C. Chino's dash C has some great reach and graze, so it's a good move to be on the most. A nice pressure from Zedai. Uh, oh, well, well, hold on, uh, speaking on the topic of Scorching Sun, uh, <laughs> you 
may notice that. Hold on, let's see how much health he has. So he has the stats on this much health. Uh, actually, yeah, he's he's actually kind of hurting himself. Yeah. 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 It's not as bad. As it looks it, it looks small at first, but That's like, like over a thousand damage. It's like a thousand damage is a lot of damage. That's a yeah. whole hit or two in scramble situations that you just took. And he didn't really need to risk. Oh wow! Okay, I'm sorry. There's the ghost god punish. Sorry, okay, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Let's let's go back. One. Okay, so this two one four is extremely questionable in the first place. Uh, but let's not talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So he uses that and then. <laughs> <laughs> this the happens. Yanko actually forward border escapes it. The it's last hit. Impressive in itself. Um, but then Zedai used the spell card uh, to be airtight off that uh, snowball. Now, normally uh, this would work and uh, Nyanka would have to block, block this spell and uh, it wouldn't have crushed, but it would have, depending on how he manipulates the beam, there's a trick to make it plus. So it would have been a pretty bad situation potentially. <laughs> because Nyanka forward border escaped it on the last hit, uh, even before the spell flash. The border, border escape comes out, and he just ends up right in Zedai's face. That's not easy to do. Like, yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, quite melee cancel into into um spell card is very hard to border escape. Frame window, I think. So pretty hmm. strict, uh, especially Ny considering Yanko wouldn't be too used to that. So. Yeah, yeah. Because you could see him perfecting it yeah, earlier, it which is really it, just, it just makes it the best. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, one all. A good good match from a uh, Zedai taking the game off. Uh, Nyanko. So now it's uh, game three. So it starts, they're sizing each other out. Oh, Zedai blocks. Oh, nice. Uh, really good. Yeah. Really good S ring there. Oh, oh, nice decision by Zedai to 2 there. Uh, I think that makes it on air takeable. Uh, it depends on proration, but it uh, looks like he got the knockdown anyway. Good. Good decision by Notice in this pressure here, Zedai's. Yeah, you're not you're not really seeing it on Cherno's sprite, but you can see on Zedai's inputs that he's actually inputting multiple mashes. Yeah, and they're they're actually all 4A, which uh, is it's a good perk. Cherno's 4A is six frames. Uh, her 2A is actually five frames, so maybe that would be better. But unfortunately, he's doing it at a range where it definitely won't hit. So that's something to consider when poking. Right? You want to be able to. Assess the range the opponent will be. Yeah. Unfortunately for Chiruno in particular, her perks are incredibly short ranged, so it's gonna have to be after a move where they basically like have forward momentum into you or they kind of do a 60 reset from close up. So yeah, um something to think about when perking, especially as Chiruno. Okay, so moving on. Knockdown. Uh, now this is interesting. Um, so this didn't really come to bite Zedai here, but um, you can see his Okazomi isn't entirely clean here. Um, he does read the tech. He does. He, he does fly towards Nyanko. Um, but if you pay close attention, his his air button doesn't hit. Yeah. His air, his, his air button doesn't yeah. even come out. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, there's a lot of frames where Tenshi's just walking. Before yeah. Zedai lands his uh, 5A. Now Nyanko is doing the right thing. Nyanko is respecting. Nyanko is saying like, okay, I, I trust that your setup will be will be real, even though it wasn't. Um, but if you're playing against Ayana in particular, or or a strong Any player, highest, yeah, strong player, um, they can they can they have this like sense of what's real and what's fake. And yeah. when they see that coming, they'll be like, oh, this might be fake, and they can timing poke it. They can right. input the button at a time where. If they're in block stone from your button, it won't come out. But if you whiff, they hit you. And that's a massive swing right there. Yeah, especially with Tenshi, considering how much damage she can do with a single poke, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, try to be a bit more careful with your meaty timings, uh, said I. Something to work on with the lab tool, maybe. Okay, so moving on. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, speaking of perks, Nyanko gets one through. Uh, Zedai did an interesting 6C there. Unfortunately, left the... uh, Nyanko unfortunately drops the combo. Uh, as Tenshi, you really want to maximize, or as anyone really, but Tenshi in particular. Okay, 
Okay, another <laughs> interesting exchange. <laughs> right. To reset though. Yeah, you, you want to kind of in, in maximize your return. Uh, interesting conversion from Yonko there. So if, if we add up how much damage Yonko lost over those last like 10 seconds, it's, it's, it's pretty big. Yeah. That there's two dropped combos basically, though that kind of made up for it, but that was, <laughs> that was unforced damage on Zedai, he just... Uh, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't grazing, so... Okay. So, yeah, just a few more... Try to get your combos to scratch in uh, situations you might have used. He can see Zedai spending a lot of time just like sitting around on the ground... Uh, yeah, that's... True. Moving back and forth, feeling out spacing, which is fine. It's, it's a good part of any... Any good player who's um, neutral strategies, Chef uses it a lot in particular, but um, unfortunately we're not seeing like the the other side of that. Like Zedai's playing pretty exclusively very horizontally and very grounded. So this is the kind of area he's playing in, maybe high jump distance. But uh, in 12.3 you might notice that uh, the screen is very vertically long. Like you can actually go up above the life bars if you want, where I'm circling. Um, and it's a really important part of kind of uh, mixing up your movement in neutral and kind of unlocking more approach paths, like you can fly up and down like that from here. Mm. If you only go to here, you kind of have to go like that, which is mm. a lot... Uh, it's a lot easier to avoid or repel than a diagonal down approach. And on top of that, they kind of don't have to worry about this area, so it makes you a lot more kind of predictable in neutral. Yeah. So yeah, you, you want to try to use most of the screen if you can. For anybody who's um any anybody who's watching this who not just Nyonko is that anybody who's saying like yeah, that is true. I could be using that part of the screen more. I would recommend a really easy way to implement this is to just every now and then in the game high jump and let yourself get to the very peak of your high jump and just play around from there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, that's see what that's right. see what you can do. Like see see what different approach paths that opens up and such. Okay, so uh, moving on. A nice pillar block. Uh, actually, kind of inadvertently leads to damage there. Oh, Nyanko takes the What a good combo. Good conversion. Okay, we'll see Nyanko's pet card here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he equips the beam. It's a really messy scramble situation. Uh, yeah. Drops the um drops the four cost conversion though. It's sunny. That was a lot of damage. You could have gone for a ton of damage with that four cost. Uh, ooh, okay, good use of reverse. Hmm. So that I once out. Uh, another one of those high speed jumps that didn't need too much, but no matter. Actually, hold on. I think we saw something. Yeah, I think we need to go back a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is um this is a really nuanced situation, but it's also pretty important. Um, you see, um, Nyanko going to Tenchi Six Eight uncancelled, and then neutral high jump, as you can see right here. Um, this is a good option, but it's a good option to be vertical border evades usually. Yes, that's right. Um, so if the opponent border evades against her Six A, and Tenchi didn't cancel it. Uh, it actually applies with 6B as well, so uh, I don't think it's... It's good against 6B as well, I guess it's a... Well, actually, even against 6B, she has to block. So may maybe it's not too good of an option uh, compared to 6B, but uh, it, it does have the advantage of letting her reset on a wrong block, I guess. But what Nyanko did there with the high jump is only really advisable if you see them do a upwards border escape, so 2B and you react to that border escape and you high jump up and to and mm -hmm. go into air pressure basically. Yeah. Um, what Nyanko did there was he didn't react, he just kind of pre-inputted that high jump and that unfortunately led to Zedai uh, being able to escape. Yeah, even if Zedai doesn't really do anything there, um, if he's just blocking, like playing like normal and you see Nyanko high jump, it's like, oh, I will take my path out. It's not exactly throwing away your pressure, but it's really hard to continue pressure there. Um, so if you, are, if you do want to use that option, you want to be reacting. You yeah, want to make sure that you're consistently reacting to the board. Option. And even that aside, um, even if you do insist on using your on-read, 
Zerai hasn't really represented that option much. Um, True, he that's... hasn't done a single uh, 2P so far, I think. Maybe he has, but... Uh, he did uncommon. do one early, but but not not in this situation. And um, we do, as we've noted earlier, uh, Zerai's main option so far has been 6P. Um, yeah, that's right. And yeah, th that, ho that high jump doesn't work well against 6P either. So Nyanko would want to, uh, in terms of like player adap adaptation, he'd want to kind of form his pressure around based off what he's seen so far, which is a lot of 6B. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, something to think about. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll move on. Oh, sorry, let me just stop the speak. Um, okay. So, ZI lands and then 5A. Uh, oh, it doesn't get the confirm. Yeah, it doesn't get the cancel again. It's yeah, okay, another one. Oh, okay, there's a bit of a late one, but at least there's a 6A cancel. Into another 6A, that's a bit of a questionable pressure decision. Um, mm. 6A is quite slow, so you do want to... If you want to high after there as a kind of a melee reset, I guess what I personally recommend is a far 5A or a dash A. Chinra's dash A, while it has a caveat of doing low spirit damage on wrong block for some reason, it's a pretty solid uh, dash move, uh, letting her continue pressure on wrong block, and uh, if she runs ice charge, it even lets her kind of scare them into being able to continue pressure on right block. So a uh, good good, good uh, high option that would have been quite good there, though Nyanko mm -hmm. would have escaped regardless, but... Yeah, but the point is that 6A, 6A, it's kind of like inviting your opponent to escape because there's yeah, such a big gap there, it's really easy to get out just by sensing something something up. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay, so we'll see what happens from there. Okay, uh, Nyanko fired a drill there, it looks like it was a 6B. Uh, ZA was up here, so that wouldn't have hit. So, uh, I guess, uh, I'm guessing Nyanko, considering there was a lot of A inputs before, <laughs> Um, Nyanko was probably <laughs> anticipating a kind of a grounded 5A hit. Uh, it looks like in the kind of heat of the moment, he pressed 6B without really looking at where ZI was. So hmm. that's uh, something to think about. A more, more kind of screen awareness when you're pressing buttons, I think would be good here. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay, neutral. Oh, nice. Uh, Nice laser hit, which knocks down. Um, we actually tested this in practice mode. Uh, apparently, at that height, it wouldn't have been possible for Chirino to air tech anyway. But if you look at Zedai's inputs, it looks like he wasn't attempting an air tech. Um, something I'd like to note down is at this distance, where there's like a, you know, like Tenshi was even further back, so there's an even greater distance. There's not much he can really do against an air tech. So y you want to try to go for that air tech. Wherever you can. Yeah. If the difference safe. between the difference between um, at this at this specific screen space, the difference between letting yourself get knocked down and being pressured and the, and air taking away is massive. That's right. And there's, it doesn't it doesn't hurt you from trying it. Yeah, and um, considering the life difference as well, uh, Zedai might have actually been able to get in a like a sneaky J five A or something as Nyanko tried to approach him to punish the air tech. Hmm. And that might have actually sealed the game. So uh, yeah would pay to at least try to attack in situations like that, uh, even yeah. though it wouldn't have likely come out as we tested in practice. Yeah, yeah. But uh, okay, moving on. Okay. So we use B slash there. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Um, generally, I, I don't quite know the full merits of the B version, I know it's slightly faster. But uh, for that extra damage on hit, uh, even at level 1, you want to uh, use the C version of that slashing skill to catch B's in Tenshi pressure. Mm. But there's more to that situation too, because as you can see, Tenshi Nyanku is still trying to catch this B after 6A. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, and Zedai so still hasn't represented B at 6A. Yeah, that's, that's right. He's mainly been doing it against Drills, so that's uh, another thing to consider. Okay, moving on. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, that five C there was a bit dangerous, considering that I was heading straight for him. Uh, especially with Chirino's speed. Uh, luckily, it didn't get him hit. But uh, yeah, that, that's five C is a bit of a more long-range oriented option for Tenshi. So 
some, something to keep in mind. And then Tenchi <laughs> so, falls down and presses the card uh, button. Pressing the S spell button, uh, which is going to use Quake. Um, <laughs> not quite sure what he's trying to do there. I think he's trying to activate Quake. <laughs> yes, that's that's a reasonable deduction. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, it, whatever he was trying, uh, the quake doesn't come out, and even if it did, uh, did I would have gotten the punish, so... Uh, hmm. Good idea to block there, or use a reversal. Maybe... Yeah, just evade that situation yeah. somehow. Especially on such low health. Yeah, and he's on low health, so... Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, actually that does take the game, unfortunately. Okay. So, next, final round. Uh, 6B into... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this is big. Into another 6B. Uh, Nyonko wasn't really, I guess, uh, similar to before, it looks like he wasn't really observing what his last move's effect was. He wasn't really looking at where I was on the screen. Uh, so if you, if you kind of uh, look at that interaction, you'll notice that uh, his... Let's see... Yeah, his 6B was grazed, and he <laughs> went for another one. Uh, I guess uh, it was a bit of a... Like, it was at the right angle, it didn't miss completely, so there was a chance that it would have hit Chuno. It's just that, uh, it's a bit of a risky option to kind of invest into a second 6B after landing there. And Especially it, when you have so much time to confirm the hit anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's true, you don't need to really rush the input. So, yeah, it might have been good for Nyanko to just block after landing, or even jump out, though that would have been hit too, actually. So, yeah, it's a bit more awareness of the opponent's position, I guess. Not, not to say that this wouldn't have worked, because Chuno might have been hit by the 6B, but I think it would have been better to react to that, since you do get a bit of time. Hmm. Okay, so let's let's uh, move on. Okay, good knockdown. Uh, yep, good. Um, okay, that uh, jump cancel out of 5B was very late. Um, if we look at Zedai's inputs, we notice that it looks like he might have been wanting a 6B. Uh, maybe he let go of the 6 too early, but that came out as a 5B. And, uh, he, he tried to follow it up with 236B, which uh, 6B, 236B should be airtight in mid screen, so it, it wasn't a mm. bad decision. But uh, I suspect he did the input too quickly, and uh, he pressed the move before the cancel window for it perhaps. Mm. Uh, re regardless of the reason, the 236B didn't come out and the 6B came out as a 5B, so uh, might want to try slowing down the input a bit maybe. Um, give it a few tries in practice mode and see what, what has the most success for you, I guess, is my best advice. Okay, so let's move on. That, J5, that J6C there was really well placed. Yeah, that was a really well placed J6C. Oh! oh. <laughs> value! The value! So, um... Obviously, Nyanko went shopping at a, a closing of store sale. Um, <laughs> he just got a five cost card for one card there. Um, are you gonna Are you gonna pass up that deal? I ain't gonna pass up that I deal. Mean, uh, I, normally, I wouldn't recommend a raw uh, five cost like that, but in this case, the price is just the value is like the value like the value just yeah it's one fifth. It's you can't turn that. <laughs> <laughs> So you'll notice that <laughs> amusingly the, the snow destroyed the 5 cost as he was casting it before the spell flash, so it didn't consume the card yet. <laughs> the spell flash consumes one card, which was the skill. So you basically only used one card for this 5 cost. Uh, and uh, it completely misses. Now, the, uh, now I, I, I might have been telling Fibs, this, this may seem like value, but what they don't tell you with the Devil's Deal is that you pay for it in your blood. Um, and, and the punishment that Nyanku takes, or Nyanku maybe should have taken, uh, does not does not outpay the value of getting a five card. Unfortunately, full. true. <laughs> but he does get a nice J2A hit there um, and converts it. He, he could have put a J5A in there. That's not too bad. A good army use. <laughs> Zed I mashing the A key. Um, I'm assuming he was trying to use that tech roll. Um, you can just hold down the button. But it's hmm. Another 6B here. Yeah. Oh. And another 6B. The 6Bs are really hurting Zed I here. He's really getting. Oh, Chica Block. At least there's a bit of variety there. But yeah, he really needs to get the 6Bs. Okay, so that was a 
sorry. Oh, okay, yeah. Zedai's corner combo here uh, with the 5C2 B6. He ran out of pre uh, spirits there, but I think he could have J2 as a follow up. Yeah, one thing I've noticed is that um, Zedai doesn't quite use the uh, J2A combos that Komomo does. Um, and I feel like it cuts into his damage a fair amount. So, yeah. learning how to use those J2A combos would probably. Obviously, everyone likes dealing damage. Um, yeah, yeah. So, it probably pay a lot of dividends. Yeah, and especially as Chiruno, she tends to be on the lower end of damage, so you want to take what you can get. Like, it counts more to land your hits when you can get it, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, anyway. Uh, we see Nyanko poking with a successful dash A here. With no follow up, unfortunately. Um, if you're gonna poke, uh, I think a good assumption is that y you're kind of putting the risk on that move itself, so y you want to assume that it's gonna hit. So uh, it would have been good for Nyanko there if he had followed it up with a 623 maybe, or 214. Mm. Uh, just increase the return of that risk you're taking if it succeeds to balance out the risk reward of the perk. Okay, let's move on. Another 6P. That's gotta hurt. Oh, good call Yeah, that's Nyanko. that that literally costed the game. Unfortunate uh, 6B. Yeah, Zedai really needs to uh, reconsider those 6Bs, I think. It's it's really costing him a lot in these games. Um, so now it's a 1-2 one, uh, one, two to Nyanko's way. So it's match point mm. in Nyanko. So the final replay. Uh, that that's kind of tells us what happens. <laughs> Bit of a spoiler. Okay, but yep. Uh, straight hit, but uh, he tried to got hit during his own. Uh, uh, Zedai wakes up with an ambitious dash forward into high jump. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not, hold on, let's go. Situation, when you're in this situation where you you don't have, you don't really have the frames to play with here. Um, yeah, um, unfortunately Nyanko was like already in the position he was jumping into. And it wasn't like he was locked into any kind of animation, like he was quite late into the flight. So he was free to act. Um, so generally in that situation you want to avoid where they are if you're trying to escape. So a 8 high jump would have been better or even a 60. Um, 60 might have worked, yeah. yeah. But I mean, if, if you're not sure, you can just block. That's a, that's a great thing. There's one really good option for the situation. Um, if you press it's a 4A, uh, you <laughs> collect a lot of damage. <laughs> that's true. Uh, just just get that uh, Giga Flare ready and uh, <laughs> counter hit going. And oh, what's this? You've won the game. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, moving on from a certain powerful win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by Zedai, uh, great air unblockable play from Nyanko. Unfortunately drops the combo and just the combo and cuts. Hmm. These, um... These... A lot of 6B snipes from Zedai. Yeah. Now, 6B... Um, good, good, good in isolation, but, um... Better with a friend, wouldn't you? That's true, um, it has a great buddy known as a default 236B. And uh, this this move uh, is similar to 6B in that it's uh, aimed. Well, it actually fires three small bullets, but uh, they're aimed at the opponent and travel quite quickly. Uh, even faster than 6B actually. But a great advantage they have over 6B, and a reason why it's uh, nice to sometimes follow up 6B with it is uh, that it knocks down on hit, which is a huge asset because um, mm. knockdown leads to like a guaranteed advantage. It's not like a bit of an ambiguous scramble situation of these stray hits that they can kind of just recover off very quickly. So you want to take those uh, force advantages where you can. Um, yeah, no you'll notice that the, okay. the second 6B that you, you pressed that I did actually connect, and if you followed that with 2, 3, 6B, you would not be getting hit by it now, you'd that's be true. engaging um, He would be doing Oki, yes, that's true. And uh, also, of course, with any bullet into bullet, it gives you the option of a second wave of bullet that flows quickly behind the first one. So if an opponent's a, a skilled player who can kind of judge when they're past a bullet and like attack immediately, it has the ability to catch them out in that situation, which is always nice to have. Yeah, it gives you a neutral more variety. So a bit more 2 through 6 use uh, when you're in a sniping mood in neutral that I, I think would help. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's let's move on a bit. We're nearing the end. Um, we've missed, so not much pressure going on. Nice, uh, straight hit from the- Oh, nice! Limit combo. Very good. Um, some awkward river mist, all good. 
Oh, nice convert. Oh. Uh, there's the punish again. Nyako's too good. <laughs> Did you like lab that or something? <laughs> like. Maybe he got tired of That was a great J8A. The J8A was really good. Um, I'm glad to see Nyanko you use those uh, quite often recently. It's a great strength of tension. Mm. It's just that uh, in that situation there, you probably would have been able to take the game if you hadn't followed it up with 5C. 5C mm. is not something... I, I suspect it might have been a misinput. That's not generally something you'd follow J8A up with. Um, but yeah, if, if especially because it's Dust Storm, you had like a... There was a lot of time to kind of confirm into anything, which probably would have uh, led to a, the rounds being taken. So j just something to be a bit more careful of next time. Uh, we've also saw a little bit before another 6B by ZA. <laughs> yeah, there's a, the 6B continues to uh, haunt his pressure escapes. Uh, definitely need to kind of revise what... If you can do it mid-set, that's amazing, but uh, it might be good to take some time on character select or... At worst, uh, after the set, just to reflect on what what worked as a pressure escape and what didn't. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, 6B is definitely not working here, so uh, tr try defaulting to 2B as a good starting point. I think that'll take you far from now, Zedai. It's uh, what I'd recommend. Okay, so let's keep going. Good uh, Okay, yep, good pressure. Not much to say there, so I didn't be there actually. Uh, so yeah, but Nyanko's obviously expecting those BEs and use that BE catch skill card. <laughs> the 6 BE which gets the round taken. Did I gotta be that was first. Yeah, that 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 one died to reland. Okay. Nyanko's doing reland a lot here. Oh uh a bit tight. Maybe he could have gone into that 4 cost laser for huge damage, but uh... Difficult, yeah, very difficult. difficult. It's very weak once the weather goes away, which it did. So, yeah, it's no comment. But it looks like he's gonna get a great convert. Yeah, it's really good convert. 3.6k, not bad at all. Nanko, I mean, feels tenchy. Six B pays out this time. Yeah, six B actually pays out that time. Two B would have worked too though. But um, so yeah, Nyanko with a good spell string, unfortunately doesn't get the crush. I'm not sure if he knew that or not. So he went for the six B, which uh, if Zedai hadn't border escaped, would have crushed. So uh, pretty good decision making from Nyanko there, but uh, also great decision making from Zedai. Uh, mm -hmm. Although it's the <laughs> the cursed six B, it actually did save him there uh, from blocking that six B and got him out, which is great. Okay, so moving on. Oh, it's a really good error. Um, Stray J2 hit. Uh, he probably would have wanted to air take that. Oh, the 6, six B. The 6 B into the punish! This is what we've been waiting for the whole we time! Were, we, looks like uh, we, we were too quick to judge that 6 B. <laughs> um, yeah, it definitely will work sometimes. So, uh, we're not saying to not use it at all, but uh, yeah, it's definitely quite situational. Yeah, it's something... 6B is one of those tools you really want to use. It's like a it's like a precision tool. You use it to yeah. beat something in particular. It, it's uh, 2B is a really... Yeah. It, 2B has like a, a wide use case, but mm. you want to whip out the 6B when you see something that can be 6B. Yeah, like it's, it's definitely strong, and uh, strong players will use it a lot. But um, I feel like uh, until you get more used to the intricacies of it, uh, you're, you're going to have a better success rate just focusing on 2B as your default action. So yeah, that's a... Uh, but, but good job with that 6B, and you even converted the combo, so that's, that's nice to see. Alright, let's uh, move on. Nice 5C walls. And Zedai has the 5 cost. Let's see what he can do with it. Ah, great 2C cover from Nyanko there. Nice uh, defensive pass. Oh, nice. And he gets the limit. Uh, one extra JTC here. Ah, yes, that's right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, while it was great that he could get that limit, um, if he actually... 
take a look at what happens in that combo. You can see the limit's at 40. Now uh, J8A, and generally most uh, directional melees in the air and ground, at 40% limit. So uh, ideally Nyanka would have been looking at that 60% limit there and just decided that, okay, all I need to do is J8A and this combo will limit into knockdown. Uh, unfortunately he wasn't quite looking there and he does a excess J2C, which slows his fall and uh, makes his Oki not quite as good as it could have been. He, he still gets it. Yeah, he gets his melee, but he needs to supplement it with a read and that's an Oki situation that could have been Yeah, he, he could have gone into a like the Quake maybe, not 100% sure, but he would have at least uh, been able to react to their wake up better if he hadn't done that J2C. So okay, that's, uh, that, that's still worked out for him, but something to think about. Uh, keep an eye on the limit meter with your compress. Okay, uh, gets that one. Nice down pressure, Zedai's on really low health now, very dangerous. Still moving straight forwards, out of breath. Yeah, the... And then gets clipped. The forward grounded escape, 6B, 60, uh, has cost him greatly this set, unfortunately. And if you'll go back a little bit to 11.40, or 11.04. Yep, 11.04. You will see that uh, Zedai's last words at the end of this set, that, that his parting words are dab, D-A-B. <laughs> your, your sacrifice will not be in vain, Zedai. Tuno 2B. It is a dab, it's a dab. Uh, it was before the dab was invented, I think. Yeah, it was like a before the dab was yeah, even a thing. I just... It's... It's a popular joke, right? That came around in like... Yeah, something like that. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Tenchi is missing one D. All the way for us to have B D D D. B D. <laughs> we need one more D. Sorry, that's a bit of an injury. <laughs> um, anyway, okay. so uh, what do you think of that set, uh, JD? Just generally, before we move on to uh, more analytical. I'm really happy with how much Nyanko has progressed. Yeah, um, Nyanko's been really working hard at uh, getting better in the past few weeks. Uh, yeah, Nyanko is really solid. Especially since the last Wildermans, uh, he's really been putting in the game, so really, really good job to Nyanko. This, this... I, actually, actually, I actually felt really bad putting Nyanko in B letter, yeah, but I had to. <laughs> Unfortunately, he didn't do too well in the Wildermans and the one before, so he ended up in the uh, second tier ladder. Uh, there's three ladders in total this season. Hmm. Uh, he, he, I think as a player, he, he does belong in the top ladder, and he, he will definitely be in the top ladder based on his results from this season next time mm. but uh yeah unfortunately his uh, wildermint results uh, kind of dropped him down to the second ladder so yeah hopefully um, this grinding there uh, can keep him afloat in the top ladder for, uh, <laughs> yeah, for yeah. the foreseeable future because it's definitely showing that he's playing very yeah. solidly he's like really solid now um i think he has a few things here and there to clean up but he's got his general game plan down he knows what he's doing um, yeah and with the with the waking of um of accountant Nyanku, <laughs> we we will, Australia is surely trembling in fear. <laughs> That's true. Uh, he's he's holding back the the waves of uh, grass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, you say that, but grass is green and money is green. So grass is account. Wow, there's an unbreakable link between grass. And <laughs> Anyway, that's Zedai. Uh, that, that's Nyanko. That's yeah. for Zedai. Um, Zedai is one of those players, I feel like he's got a few things that really holds him back. Like a few key things that if he fixed and worked on, he'd make, see a lot of progress. Okay. Um, yeah, um, on that topic, we're actually... Uh, we've made a few notes of what... Uh, we'll be doing this in future replays as well, at the end. But basically, what allowed the winning player to win? What made the losing player lose? Uh, in our opinion, of course, and uh, what each player did well and what they could improve. Yeah, so, uh, so this little section here is basically, if you take anything from this video, the two people who are featured in this video, take this part. Like, remember remember what we say here, this is the most important thing. These, yeah. these are the parts of this set that if they went differently or if you adapted differently, if you paid attention to these parts of the set, the set would have been different. That's you might have right. won, yeah. you might have lost. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, 
So we'll first start with why do we think uh, Zerai was bested by Nyanko? Why did he lose? Okay, the, the biggest reason uh, at the top of the list is this questionable and risky defensive option. Mm, yeah, that's definitely a real standout issue from this set. Um, as we mentioned a lot during the commentary, all his escapes were... Oh, the vast majority of his escapes were along the ground, either a ground dash or a 6B. Now, they're not necessarily bad options uh, if you look at them in isolated cases. And he wasn't doing them in terrible places either, for the most part. It's just that, um, <laughs> because he was so over-reliant on it, Nyanko was uh, quite easily able to kind of get used to it and start predicting it as something that's going to come in a lot of his pressure. And uh, Nyanko being quite good at, you know, pressure, he, he was able to punish these quite severely. With big Tenchi damage. That's true. And it definitely cost Zedai a ton of health and even uh, closed out a lot of games for Nyanko. So yeah, that's the first thing. Um, what, what's the next point? Uh, the next thing is um, kind of related to the first one is he didn't really adapt to Nyanko's pressure. Mm, yeah. That's, that's... I do think in Nyanko's pressure is where a lot of this game was won and lost. Um, mm. Uh, that's kind of related, but basically, um, after using 6B, because 6B and other defensive options by themselves are a thing, but corollary coll coll to that, or however it's pronounced, is um, adapting to, to what's happening yeah. and changing your plan. Um, but then, uh, that aside, um, we'll stop talking about that. <laughs> um, there were a lot of key situations in the match where um, Zerai um, was poised to take a great advantage, mm doing a lot of damage or whatever, or getting a good knockdown, but he just dropped his combo. Yeah, it's, uh, th they were like really cool combo attempts, like he was actually trying some pretty advanced uh, J5C kind of air juggles, which are really good to see, but just the last hit with the land cancel J6A, he was missing uh, basically every time unfortunately, and it's, uh, it is pretty hard, and he, he's attempting it, which is the important thing. Uh, one time we even saw him do a landed 6A instead of the land cancel J6A. But if he could get used to those, or even go into the sword spell card, if you remember in the first set, uh, he'd definitely be getting a lot more uh, real advantages off those combos, uh, and even more damage than he already was getting, so hmm. it's definitely something to focus on. Um, yeah. Okay, um, what else do we have? Um, the other main thing that was holding Zedai back, I think, was his neutral. He didn't really have a consistent game plan. It was really, um, it was kind of aimless, and he wasn't utilizing uh, bullet cover cover effectively, and his movement wasn't really active. He was really passive pretty often, which is a good way to, like, that, that is a functional part of everyone's neutral, but, um, you need the other side of the coin, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you, we noticed that later in the set he was doing some really good J6Cs, uh, though at closer ranges, uh, we think uh, Zedai would see a lot of mileage out of using Juno's versatile kind of bullets in neutral, like a J2C from high up, where you can follow that down, uh, 2C anti airs or 2 2 anti airs, uh, you know, 2B anti airs, just sprinkling 5Bs out to uh, distract the enemy, kind of interrupt their mm -hmm. bullets. Uh, just, uh, she has a lot of options and uh, it's it's important to be able to build them into your neutral game plan as Chuno. Mm. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, we can see Zedai using more of those in future sets. Uh, and in, with movement too, like uh, JD was saying, his movement was very uh, passive. And like we mentioned earlier, it wasn't using the entire screen, which is really limiting your kind of uh, angles of approach, as well as your ability to kind of evade the opponent's approaches. I wonder... Uh, this is pure conjecture, but I wonder if um, Zadai playing horizontally across a ground and neutral, um, and mainly horizontally, even in the air, is related to him using uh, horizontal escape options as well. Mm, maybe, maybe. He he might be locked in a mindset uh, where he's probably not... He's more used to other games, maybe? It's pure guessing, but uh, where he might not be used to moving vertically as much, or that being a, as important of a factor as it is here so yeah uh, hopefully we can see him build that into his game plan in future point sets. is sky's the limit just go up yeah the sky is the limit so, <laughs> okay um let's see what else do we have 
Uh, that's all for that's all for ZI um ZI losing. Let's talk about what ZI did really. Mm -hmm. uh, what he did really well. So, uh, other than his uh, questionable use of default two one four, uh, which wouldn't have been too bad if it was the alt two one four ice charge. M maybe he was uh, thinking he had that equipped. But uh, his pressure was actually pretty good overall. Hmm. Um, we, we saw a few cases of him uh, catching Yonko's escapes and uh, even going for spell crushes, though it didn't quite work out. Uh, the attempt's very uh, admirable. It's an important part of Chiruno's game plan. Hmm. Uh, he, he was getting those uh, you know, J60 resets going and even uh, some kind of more advanced strings like 5C, 236. Uh, it's it's yeah, really good yeah. to see. So keep that up, said I. Um, that was definitely yeah. one of your His strong points this set. His pressure being so good, um, it's it's kind of a shame to see him using two one four so often. Yeah, that's because true. two two one four, it's kind of when you use it, you're kind of like forfeiting a lot of your pressure, and your pressure is actually really good, said I. Um, yeah, you don't want to be throwing strength away like that, right? Yeah, not only is it uh, throwing away any pressure you had, it's also getting you punished. So it's like you probably want to avoid using that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, unless you play anyway. alternate one. That's that's definitely good pressure. Here. Anyway, aside from that, um, another one of Zedai's strengths is um, he has really effective risk mitigation in neutral. He, he plays really safe. I feel like usually it's kind of hard to approach Zedai. It's hard to get in on him. Like a lot of the times that uh, Nyanko was doing damage in this set, not many of them was from Zedai screwing up in neutral. A lot of them was from like pressure interactions or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, his, I guess a, a maneuver you saw, saw him do quite a lot was like chicken block into J5C. Hmm. Uh, he, he got a lot of mileage out of that. It's a pretty good maneuver for Chiruno to do just because of how her, uh, her J5C works and as well as I think she has a good horizontal jump distance. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like these combine together to give her a really uh, kind of a nasty defensive, kind of a not really huge investment defensive option in neutral, which Zeta was using really well, so that was great to see. Hmm. Um, and I guess uh, we, on the topic of combos, uh, although they were dropped, like I mentioned, it's great to see him attempting these uh, ambitious multiple J5C air combos. Uh, so yeah, keep that up and you'll get there um, one day, probably quite soon, considering uh, you got pretty far into those combos. So hmm. looking forward to see a combo master Zedai. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Okay, and uh, oh, and one thing that's might be hard to notice uh, unless you have this handy replay input viewer on. Is Zedai's inputs were actually a uh, really clean <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, uh, there was one time when we brought attention to um, uh, input buffer problem, but apart from that, he's got really concise inputs. Yeah, he doesn't like a, really mash. That's that's a great strength, I think. In uh, especially, I don't know how it is in other games, but in twelve point three, uh, generally the cleaner your inputs are, the more control you have over your actions and decision making. So. It's a, he's gonna get good. The game, there. the game depend demands a lot of precision over your inputs, especially for movement and such. So yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a good so habit to get into to press the buttons that you need to press when you need to press them. Yeah. So uh, all you new starters watching this, or even more experienced players who are uh, kind of maybe pressing the attack buttons a bit too many times, uh, I think I'm it's... guilty. <laughs> it's it's a good thing to focus on for sure. I, I really do recommend you work to cleaner inputs. Especially in low delay games that we can get in the oceanic region with each other, uh, you don't need to compensate for like heavy delay or stutters you'd see in, uh, I guess, international matches. So I would recommend trying to clean up your inputs. It's, it's definitely a good initiative to take. Okay. Um, uh, okay, that's all we really have to say about Zedi, there I is think. There's one more actually. Uh, it's very good to see him uh, aware of his reversals that he had in his hands. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, he, there was uh, we one didn't. Time where he used that four cost reversal, uh, he actually swapped into it, I believe, and used it just as he got it, pretty much. Yeah, we didn't really talk about this when we were um, going over the re yeah, uh, that's true. the replay, but yeah, it, he he did it, he did use his reversals very well. Um, you can see him actively trying to swap to reversal as he's being pressured, yeah. which is actually really hard to do. <laughs> it's really hard to time. Yeah. Good job, yeah. That's really good to see. Okay, now let's focus on the winner of the set. Nyanko. Yes, Nyanko. Um, so, first, off. And, uh, first of all, why do we think Nyanko won? Yeah, and um, I think the the biggest like the biggest reason Nyanko won 
the, 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 like, the top of the list um, is that Nyanku has consistent combos that do high damage playing, playing Tenchi with consistent knockdown and consistent pressure. Yeah, it's uh, this consistency really took him far in this set. Like every hit mm. he lands, it just led to uh, over three thousand damage and uh, most of the time a knockdown or at least a pressure reset. And uh, of course, Nyanko beating his chest. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a uh, very very good consistency in regards to combos, and even with pressure, he was a. Uh, Great at adapting to what Zedai was doing. He picked up quite early that uh, Zedai's main escape option was 6BE. Mm. So uh, a lot of his, uh, although there were some exceptions like that high jump off uncancelled 6A, um, he, he did do a great job at blocking Zedai's main escape option, uh, 6BE mm. and 6D. And that there's the damage he got off that really hurt Zedai. It even led to a few games being taken. So uh, good yeah, job that. uh, like. That's, uh, one of the greatest things about having consistent combos and high damage and all that is that it kind of amplifies your other strengths because if you have really good high damage in combos and you have good adaptation, then every reward you get from adapting to your opponent is magnified because you're doing that much more damage. Yeah, for sure. That's a, that's a good point JD makes there. So yeah, keep that up, Nyoko. Um, that's definitely one of your strengths and it's really nice to see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and another strength is a uh, confident play in scramble situations. So uh, there were a lot of situations where both players were kind of missing each other by <laughs> narrowly or just firing bullets. Uh, yeah, or like, situations where like there's multiple counter hits in a row and everyone's just yeah, getting hit. Every impossible to really keep up with what's going on. Uh, Yanko kind of, uh, I guess uh, it kind of depends on the context, like character matchup, player matchup, etc. But in this case, uh, he's up against a character with vastly lower damage than him. So the confidence he kind of demonstrated in his play was a really good decision, I think, on his part in this set. And, uh, Especially when you have a tool like uh, Tenchi 6B at the hand. That's true, yeah. So uh, that, that was good to see. Um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the biggest contribution to his win there, uh, <laughs> this really needs to be brought to life. <laughs> That are the, the absolute value. <laughs> <laughs> the one cost count with a rap rapture. Oh, the value though. The value. I mean, it's, you can't really argue with. That's eighty percent off. Eighty percent off, like Zeta. Buy right? now, buy now. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the actual <laughs> card did. He just got it for one card, so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the set was kind of determined by that action. That was like the big crux of Nyonko's win. Did I just the only way Zedai could have won is if he also got a one cost five card. I mean, that's one of the greatest strengths of um, Nyonko's play. I think is that he can identify these situations <laughs> where the value is there, the and he just has to grab it. Accountant, <laughs> accountant Nyonko at play right there. <laughs> <Accountant> <laughs> Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, the, the, those are Nyanko's main strengths, uh, I think, Yoko, from from this set. Uh, plays, uh, <laughs> from okay, so oh, and there was one more thing actually, not not as important as the one cost SWR, but uh, he, he did demonstrate some great air pressure and even the ability to like transition into air pressure after a rejump. Uh, his experience really shows there that's something that you kind of have to grasp with a lot of games and try and learn mm. a lot. So it's great to see it developing. Uh, I'm sure it'll get a lot stronger with time. Uh, for example, Ayana, uh, one of China's top players who's in Australia right now, uh, he, he has some really strong mix-up using a J8A, his upwards momentum, as well as a mix of air unblockers and even just crush strings with 6B. So uh, it would be good to see Nyanko implement more mix-ups like that, but right now he's doing really well at transitioning into air pressure and kind of not letting them get away for free, which is a great first step, so really good to see you. Okay, so uh, now, <laughs> after all those great strengths, let's uh, look at some things that Nyanko could have done a bit better, just to keep Zigo in check. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nyanko does need a little bit of that sometimes. <laughs> the first one, and this is a big one, is the a a a a a a a Nyanko's inputs, uh, when compared to Zedai's especially, are a bit on the messy end. Uh, you can see even on this pause screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Zedai has a clean dab going on. Nyanko has a. <laughs> <laughs> Nyanko has a. If you use shit for the word, it's a dab. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, a bit of a more input clarity would help there. Um, it actually did cost him, I think, a J5A into ground Dale link. That actually did cost Zedai too, but uh, yeah. Actually, more importantly, it cost him a scramble situation where he did a far 5A. When uh, ideally he would have been reacting to Zedai mm. jumping out and going into like a 2C, for example. Yeah, yeah, that was big. But so, the yeah. other thing is, like, it's a little more subtle, but like, um, when you're mashing the buttons and you're just, you're just pushing them, you know, you're just, you're doing it. You kind of like, it's hard to word, but you kind of like kit me yourself to that action, you know, you're kind of like, I'm just pushing the button. Whereas if you push exactly where you need it, it's a lot easier to go, okay, I did this, and then you cleanly react to the situation, yeah, if that a, makes sense. There's a kind of a decision making impact, I think, too. Yeah, it's, it's like, it, it brings to mind that situation when Yanko was falling and did J6B and they land and they just did another 6B, you know? Yeah, that's I true. Feel like, I feel like that's kind of, that kind of, it, things like that get enabled by mashing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something to think about. So yeah, um, Yanko, if you, you can try to work on cleaning those inputs a bit more, I'm sure it would, uh, it, the impact might not be really obvious, but... In the long term, I'm pretty sure it would uh, definitely clean up your 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 gameplay in general, and you'll you'll kind of maybe have uh, cleaner decision making, as what JD was saying. So it's it's just good practice to have clean inputs, I think, especially in the lower delay environment we have in uh, Oceania. Okay, so what else do we have? Um, uh, another thing that Nyanko could work on is um, at the start of the set in particular, Nyanko was baiting and really hard baiting some options that Zedai hadn't really presented. Mm -hmm. Like I was, Nyanko did spend a lot of time really focusing hard on shutting down B when um, Zedai hadn't really done that yet. That's true, uh, especially 2B. A lot of Nyanko's early gameplay was around baiting 2B, which is uh, kind of a decent assumption considering it should be the default option for a lot of players. But uh, even when Zedai kind of took a few pressure strings and didn't really do that 2B, it never really came. Uh, Nyanko was still defaulting to actions that bait out that 2B for uh, quite a few, quite a few uh, pressure engagements. Hmm. So it's to it's, Nyanko's it's, credit, they did adapt eventually. They did, yeah, that's true. So um, yeah, it's uh, m maybe try to focus a bit more on seeing the pattern in what the opponent's been doing in response mm. to your pressure. I feel like when you're trying to counter, when, when, you, when you're talking is counter counterplays and adaptations and such, um, instead of having assumption and trying to make that assumption work, you should just look at what your opponent is doing and mold your play around that. Mm. You know? Let your, let your opponent do whatever they want to do, but beat it. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a good approach. Um, yeah, so that's something to think about for Nyanko. Um, and next we have um, more awareness of the opponent's relative position to you when uh, firing bullets or uh, high jump cancelling. Um, mm. so uh, we saw a lot. Nyanko yeah. would um, put a bullet out and regardless of like the situation, regardless of um, where that I was, regardless of what bullet covers that I had, Nyanko would just jump forward and push the button. Yeah, or sometimes Nyanko wouldn't even have the time to press the button. Um, this is really risky. Um, it can work with Tenchi, like you get the damage, you roll the dice, etc. But generally, you really want to avoid taking risks wherever possible. Um, yeah, that's true. If um, you're in a situation where you're at disadvantage, you don't you don't have to take the engagement. So yeah, um, this kind of ties into watching the screen a bit more, which might be helped with uh, being a bit cleaner with your inputs, like JD was saying. Uh, so yeah, just just try to kind of be a bit more cautious when you're in a disadvantaged situation. Yeah, this is this. actually something you could um, you could um, learn from watching Zedai because Zedai is very good at this. Yeah, Zedai was quite good at that, definitely. So um, yeah. Oh, and uh, don't be afraid to backstep cancel too. Uh, you can do it. By yeah, I don't think we saw a single backstep cancel. Yes. Did did Yanka even backstep once? <laughs> I don't think so actually. Um, now no, backstep. <laughs> Only a coward would backstep. <laughs> Backstep kind of tends to be kind of overlooked, uh, especially because a lot of new players will misinput it when trying to do a backwards high jump and kind of die for doing it. So it's Frank is really a, angry in the yeah, background. It's got a bit of a stigma to it, but uh, 
Especially as a cancel, it's... It is a really good option, for, especially for repositioning in neutral and yeah, such. It, like, it throws away the advantage you may have had, but in return, if it was a situation where you were going to get punished, it's going to uh, mitigate that damage you take uh, almost all the time, and uh, you won't get counter hit, and it will generally be an air hit, so it's quite hard to combo the opponent. And if you're lucky, uh, you might avoid the punish entirely with the invincibility of the backstep, so... That's something to implement into your plan, especially when you do a bullet uh, that's quite uh, risky from a risky position. Where if it doesn't hit them, it's gonna get you punished since they graze through. Hmm. So yeah, that's that's one thing you can put into your plan. Um, another thing is uh, you could pay more attention to your health bar, especially when you have a massive life lead advantage or you're on low health, and uh, try to adjust your play around it. Like, uh, you noticed uh, Nyanko wasn't being as aggressive in his pursuit as he could have been when he had an enormous life lead and Zedai was like on his last legs. Mm. Uh, so yeah, there's a, that, that's something uh, you, you should be paying attention to, especially once you get more your head around the game and you have a bit more headspace left to consider other aspects, that's something that can really improve your play, I think. Yeah, a, a good, um, uh, something that we didn't really bring attention to this watch through, but something that Nyanko did do a few times is, um, Nyanko would, like, escape a pressure situation or s escape a messy situation or scram situation or whatever, and at really critical health, they would just do the thing. They, they put their bullet out and high jump forward and try and make something happen. Yeah. And when you're at low health, that, that's not the gameplay you want, you want to come with. When you're at low health, especially, like more than usual, I know I mentioned it before, but, but more than usual when you're at low health, you, you don't want to be forcing things. You don't want to be playing from disadvantage. Yeah, you want to try to play very cautiously and try to uh, kind of capitalize on any mistakes the opponent makes or mm. any openings. Uh, you want to play a more careful game because you can't afford to get hit by losing out of read. Because that's just going to cost you the game, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, something to consider when you're playing. Okay, uh, next thing is uh, quite related to watching the screen, a point we made earlier, but if you're on top of a bullet, uh, just make sure you're, you're not pressing a button. Just keep that grace going and get past that bullet. Mm. Uh, very similar to what we covered earlier with a bit more screen awareness, so we won't really go into this one, but yeah, just let that grace linger a bit. Okay. Um, oh, and here's here's a good one. Um, try to be a bit more aware of the frame advantage you have after a knockdown. Uh, some knockdowns you, you might not have too much frame advantage, and that's understandable. You can't get good lucky with that. But uh, if you remember back, there was a situation where Nyanko limited a combo with J88, and then uh, he, he did a J2C after that. And that J2C kind of worsened the frame advantage without adding much to Nyanko's well, it didn't add anything to the combo because that I was already limited, so uh, if you kind of try to focus more on the maximizing the frame advantage you get after a knockdown, it might make you a bit more uh, wary of the kind of enders you're doing in combos, as well as uh, focusing more on the uh, And also it would allow you to uh, allow Tenchi in particular to use her Quake card. Uh, you could find more situations where you can use that 2 and 4 c off because unfortunately in this set, I don't think Nyanko could pull it off. Uh, I don't think he pulled it off once, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, he, I, he didn't really go for it, so... Yeah. so I, I think... Uh, I don't think Nyanko used Quake at all. So uh, that, that... Maybe, yeah, I'm not sure. That also comes into question the deck building side, because yeah, um, uh, you don't want to be bringing cards you're not that's utilizing. True. I mean, even here he's got two, so he's at least running two. That's yeah. Minimum of 10% of your deck dedicated to it. So you, you're going to want to use it if you're running it like that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, try to be more wary of when you have good frame advantage and uh, try to take advantage of it. If you don't have good advantage, uh, uh, try to modify what you do based around that. Be a bit more predictive in your key or maybe bait the on-the-spot one more hard than roll, because uh, you're not going to have time to react to that in particular. So yeah, just uh, something to consider with your Oki, uh, the frame advantage, I guess how you can maximize it. Like, for example, not using that J2C. Okay. Um, and... Yeah, actually, that's... Uh, that's I think that's all we have to say. We have, yeah. Hmm. We've taken a good one hour and 47 minutes. Uh, quite a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it for the detail, that's right? That's true. We did go into a lot of detail. Uh, 
yeah, but as we get more used to this, I'm sure uh, we can kind of optimize how we do it. This is our mm. first run, so uh, bear with us if <laughs> we've had a bit of a <laughs> hard time running it. But I think we did it. Yeah, and, and we really I think we did alright, but yeah. that's that said, um, on the note of it being our first run, uh, if there's any feedback at all mm. from the people in this set or from anybody who's watching this just to get advice for themselves, um, please let us know anything we can do to improve the form. Yeah, any advice is really welcome. Um, we're not used to this, obviously, so... Yeah, uh, I mean, it's not just that we're not used to this. Um, we also, like, we don't know what the audience wants, you That's know? That's true. Uh, we, we, we're, in the, we're in the making this for you guys. That's true. So, um, yeah, any, any feedback is more than welcome. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you in the next, I guess, next replay analysis, which should be coming quite soon after this one. Yeah, whenever that may be. Yeah, so uh, yeah, hope uh, Nyanko and Zera, you uh, learned from our analysis, and we hope you have a great time in what remains of the letter. And uh, thank you for taking part in watching, and also thank you to JD for helping me set this up. <laughs> thank you, Klempfer, for your great wisdom. <laughs> it's okay. I have a lot to learn myself, so... <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, with that, I think we'll be finishing up. Uh, we'll see you next time. Um, maybe we might have a different group of commentators. We're not sure. But mm. yeah, it will probably be us too, so we'll see you again. Um, please wait warmly, and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. Okay. <laughs>